and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe here in Hungary. I hope everybody's weekend is off to a restful, productive, and healthy weekend. In this class, students, we are looking at speaking part three. In fact, we are continuing with the same speaking section as we did yesterday with speaking part two. Hi, Azhar, Suleika, Zainab, GM, Pawan. Nice to see many students. Hi, Violet. Hi, Beg John. Uh, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there for the general version of the exam. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. I put these URLs on the top of the screen here, just so you can refer to them anytime in the lesson. Uh, students, these websites, they look like this. This is the academic one here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join the premium package there. For the general one, it's the green background. Click that big red button to join there. And a new feature that a lot of students have started using is in the My Student account here, where you can find, of course, uh, lots and lots of goodies. Uh, so all of you who have our premium package, make sure you use your computer-based practice exams, your online academic course for strategies, the lesson videos. There's over 100 hours of videos there. And then off to the right on the page, you'll see the student partner speaking. I know that's a little bit bright, so I'm just going to darken it up while I show you this for just a moment. Um, so there's that student partner speaking, and I'm showing you this because this is a speaking class, and I want you to speak lots, and this is absolutely free to use on the website. So you can use it in the free version of the website. Uh, we just want to encourage you to use it. So when you click on that student partner speaking, you have to accept the disclaimer that you're going to be nice to other students. And then right now you can already see lots of students in here. So here's uh, the four students who are available at the moment for chat. They're probably looking for people to practice with, and that's great. Uh, thank you, by the way, students, for being there when I'm doing this too. So that's fantastic. Uh, if you don't connect with someone right away, don't worry about it. Just wait a little bit and then click. So if I clicked one of these, then here you would have a video chat or an audio chat. Okay. So again, that's on the website. You can video chat, text chat, and audio chat, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. So just really quickly, again, that's on the uh, student page. It's the student partner speaking, okay? So that's for all of you. All right, okay. So, oh, and it's on the general IELTS page also. So for general IELTS students, you can do the same, okay? Um, and somebody's trying to chat with me, so I'm just gonna close this. I can't chat right now, whoever's asking me to chat because I'm teaching a class, but sometimes you'll find me on here as well talking with students. So that's kind of fun and I enjoy chatting with students at times on that chat. Okay, let's get back to the lesson here. Just gonna brighten up our day a little bit so you can see this darker background a little bit more clearly. All right, so speaking part three, today we are continuing, like I said, with uh, the speaking section from yesterday. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Now, uh, the next live class will be on Wednesday. Live IELTS classes like this are Wednesday to Saturday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we're releasing other materials, HD videos, and also examples on the community chat. So check us out there, okay? Um, all right, everyone, let's get into it. I want to do lots of practice with you today. Uh, hopefully, Elena, you're in the class as well because I know you requested this topic and this is much closer 
to what I think you were thinking about. So if you're here, Elena, fantastic. All right. Um, so uh, everybody remembers uh, yesterday's part two. Before we get into these part three questions, uh, what did we talk about yesterday? What was part two about? Can somebody uh, refresh everyone's memory of what was part two about yesterday? So what was the part two cue card question yesterday? Somebody give me the answer for that. Yeah, Zaid, uh, the website where you can connect with other people, it's ahelp.com and gltshelp.com. And the game on says a uh, counterfeit item. Yeah, and always be specific, students. So uh, a knockoff product that we had bought or that we had got, right? So that's the full topic. It wasn't just any old counterfeit or replica. Um, replica is more specific, Saki bows, absolutely. So a replica product that we had got in the past, that was it. And anybody remember what that was? I think somebody said it. We talked about a Swiss army knife. If you weren't in the class yesterday, that's okay. Uh, I'm sure it will make sense today as well. If you were in the class yesterday, then work hard to connect your answers in part three, okay? So work hard to make connections among yesterday's part two response and uh, today's uh, part three answers, okay? Uh, you get higher band scores for speaking when you make good connections among your answers. That's why the examiner says, now I will ask you more questions related to the topic of part two. That's kind of a indirect hint for you to make those connections, okay? So make connections, okay? So imagine that we just cut out the last 24 hours and you just finished talking about your knockoff Swiss Army knife that you got from Amazon and you're quite upset and in the future, you will only buy for directly from the official website as a result. And now the examiner says, that's the end of uh, part two. The time is up. Please pass back the card with the questions, the note paper, the pencil. And now I'd like to continue with part three. For this part, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. And then your first question will come up. Let's talk about counterfeit products. Okay. So here we go. First question. Give me a nice full sentence answer, students. What are the most common types of merchandise that companies copy these days? So let's start with that one. Let's start with that one. So what are the most common types of merchandise that companies copy these days? And we have tons of answers coming up, which is great. Uh, Roshni says there are a variety of items that companies replicate, like clothes, precious crystals, watches, in order to gain profits just by che selling cheap material like I mentioned in the previous part. Good, Roshni. Nice connection. I like how you remembered to connect with the previous answer. Maksud says, nowadays, many companies copy a variety of brands like Adidas, Nike, even iPhone mobiles in order to sell fast. And it's easy to attract individuals at first eye shot. In fact, my friend bought a knockoff a Nike pair of shoes just last week. 
Okay, Maksud, remember to connect. Now, Maksud, you're talking about brands and you're not talking about merchandise. It's okay. It's kind of relevant, but merchandise is a little bit closer to what Roshni was saying about shoes, clothes, watches, and so on. Okay. Flower send, says most of the fakers usually choose items that are popular and easily spread among customers because this way they're likely to create counterfeit products. Flower Sun, that's not a very good answer simply because it doesn't answer the question. Um, you say they knock off popular items, but like what? Okay, so you have to give me more information. Name the specific product. So if you're talking about popular items, then say what they are. Certain mobile phones like iPhone as well as popular brand shoes like Adidas and Nike. So give a little bit more flower sun and you'll get a lot better uh, score. Okay. All right. So Marasa Baraki says ordinary products which come to mind right now is a copy of Adidas or Nike shirts, shoes, as well as these days, co uh, companies also imitate cell phones. Like now, it's easy to purchase uh, the second volume of Samsung mobiles. Okay, Marasa, good. Remember to make connections with part two. Paya Basak says a couple of items that are copied by companies are clothes and electronic gadgets like blenders and so on. Uh, Paya, don't use so on that has no value for your listener. And so on means, okay, you expect me to think about uh, the other products, but I asked you the question. And in everyday conversation, Paya, it might be okay to say and so on, but in the IELTS, it's better to just say what you think. And if there are more products, then just stop with a few examples. Okay, it will get you a better score. So don't say and so on. Don't use and so on and et cetera in your speaking or writing on the aisles. Okay, uh, Zen Frederick says companies like to replicate items which are in high demand. Brands such as Nike shoes, Puma slippers are often being copied. Zen, okay, that's good. So you're taking the extra step to explain to me which kind of products are in high demand. It's very important, students, okay? So a quick note here. Okay, quick, quick note. Always take the extra step to give clear examples and explanations, okay? So here you might say something like um, companies often knock off products that are trendy and in high demand, such as clothing, including brand name shoes, like Nike and Adidas. I don't even know how to spell. There we go. Okay, 1D. Uh, and Adidas, as well as electronic gadgets, like fake iPhones. And, of course even tools such as the Swiss army knife I had just talked about. Okay, so making that connection. So answer, explain, example, make the connection. You're getting a high band score. Uh, repeat after me. What are the most common types of merchandise that companies copy these days? Companies often knock off products that are trendy and in high demand, such as clothing, including brand name shoes like Nike and Adidas, as well as electronic gadgets like fake iPhones and, of course, 
even tools such as the Swiss Army knife I had just talked about. Boom, there you go. You'll get a high band score. Complex, coherent, fluent, task completion accuracy, really high. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Now, of course, in many cases for part three, the examiner will ask another question to follow up related to that question. Okay, so here is the follow up question. Why do companies do this? So why do companies do this? Okay, now think about the answer. So why do companies do this? Charlie Sen says, well, I think companies do this to gain a profit by sell selling cheap materials and using the reputation of branded items like I had said earlier. Some companies use Swiss Army Knife's reputations and ch sell their cheap replica. Okay, very nice, Charlie. I like the connection. I really like the connection there. Really good. Students, I'll grab different comments at different times. Uh, just typing is already practice, so don't only type in the expectation that I'm going to read and correct. When you're entering in your response into the chat, say it nice and loud. You're already practicing. When I catch it and I read it, that's just a bonus, okay? That's how you should think about it. I try to catch different students at different times, so just put it in there and also repeat with what other students are saying, okay? All right. Beck John says, from my perspective, firms are eager to do this because copying products can make a lot of money without spending on expensive resources like uh, wearing the replica version of sh Nike shoes or weaving replica version of Nike shoes uh, requires a lot less investment than the originals. Okay, back John, good. I just kind of finished uh, the end of the sentence there, but you're on the right track. A couple of corrections. Pay attention to that. Uh, Shirojidin Abdul Holikyov says, their ambition for manufacturing fake products like phones, or as I mentioned in part two, a Swiss army knife, is to earn more money. I guess it's the main purpose uh, is by getting the profit using names. Okay, all right, good. Karen Veer says, companies do this to target the segment of the community who are unable to buy genuine products mainly because of high prices. Okay, Karen, good. And now, Karen, that's where you can connect in nicely with yesterday. Um, this is what caught me off guard because I thought I had a great bargain by buying the Swiss Army knife at a discount price. Right, Karen? So that's a really nice connection that uh, companies do this to target those who want to pay less for these brand names uh, like I did when I was buying the Swiss Army knife and I only paid $60, but unfortunately it turned out to be a fake. Good, Karen. Make that connection, okay? Uh, Ferdov says, Ferdov Nabiev says, in order to not only maximize their profit margins, but also maintain the business fear, many Chinese companies uh, do this to turn a profit quickly. Okay, Ferdov, finish the idea. Finish the idea, all right? So, um, I believe that companies ride the coattail or the coattails of famous and popular brands not only to turn a quick profit easily, but also to keep down overhead costs for quality production 
and advertising. I'm sure the company that ripped me off selling me the fake knife did not invest the millions of dollars into advertising that Victorinox, the original company, does. All right, so uh, here's a nice high-level answer for you, and I'll explain why, okay? So repeat after me. Why do companies do this? I believe that companies ride the coattails of famous and popular brands not only to turn a quick profit easily, but also to keep down overhead costs for quality production and advertising. I'm sure the company that ripped me off selling me the fake knife did not invest the millions of dollars into advertising that Victorinox, the original company, does. All right? That's your nice, fluent answer. Students, when I read these answers, when I say these answers, I'm saying them at a natural, native, English-speaking speed. That's what you want to work towards. If you don't catch it right away, that's okay. Go back and practice later with the video once it's on the channel, okay? Um, here, probably some of you right now are wondering, what does it mean, ride the coattail, okay? Uh, well, if you uh, imagine uh, a person who has a coat, got a nice long winter coat, okay? Here's the person's uh, arms, and there's their feet, okay? So this is called the coattail, all right? And when somebody is riding the coattails, you can just imagine they're kind of standing <laughs> on, uh, maybe you imagine a child, <laughs> uh, standing on the tail of the coat. It means that they're using the energy of the person wearing the coat. This is an idiom, which means to basically use the energy or the capability of another entity or another person in order to move forward or to achieve. So it's kind of a nice idiom to incorporate into your toolkit of English if it's new for you. So ride the coattail, ride the coattail, okay? Um, here's another idiomatic expression that you can add to your vocabulary, turn a profit, okay? So ride the coattail, turn a profit, okay? Here's another nice expression for you. This is especially important for business students, okay? Uh, keep down means to maintain a low, so keep down, and overhead costs. Overhead costs are your business expenses, okay? So uh, all of these expressions, of course, when you use that kind of language, your lexical resource and natural language scores are really going up, okay? Um, so uh, keep those in mind. And then, of course, there's another one here, rip me off, means to scam, okay, or to cheat someone out of their money. So rip off, all right? And, uh, and then here, I'm using uh, correlative conjunctions. So I'm using not only, but also, which is a nice correlative conjunction to emphasize connective elements, okay? And as you can see, I'm giving a smooth flowing example. So I'm not saying, for example, I'm just saying the example. I'm sure the company that ripped me off selling me the fake knife, did not invest the millions of dollars into ads that Victorinox, the original company, does, okay? So there's a lot going on in these two sentences, all right? There's a lot going on there, and uh, that's why you're getting the high band score. So this is the level they're looking for for that band nine. 
you don't have to be a native speaker. Some of you are probably thinking, yeah, sure, Adrian, but you can only do that if you're a native speaker. It's not true. Many native speakers don't talk at this level or don't speak at this level. And there are many non-native speakers that can speak at this level because they're well-read, they practice, and they put effort into their communication. That's what you need to do. Read lots, speak lots, pay attention to what you say, how you say it, and put in a lot of effort, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? Now, with all of these elements, hopefully it's all clear now. Make sure to add all these words to your repertoire of vocabulary. And just repeat me one more time. I believe that companies ride the coattails of famous and popular brands not only to turn a quick profit easily, but also to keep down overhead costs for quality production and advertising. I'm sure the company that ripped me off selling me the fake knife did not invest millions of dollars into advertising that Victorinox, the original company, does. Okay. All of those people repeating and saying these, excellent. Okay, excellent. Good for you. All right. Um, so next question, let's keep going here again. Focus to do your best. Don't worry about mistakes. That's the magical trick small children use to learn languages quickly. They don't care about mistakes. They just speak. Here we go. Um, where are places that people often buy counterfeit products? Where are places people often buy counterfeit products? Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Parminder Honda says, Hi, sir, I'm your old student. Last year in September, I took the IELTS exam and got 6.5 band score. Thank you so much for your help. Parminder, it's cool. I love how you came back to share that after so much time. You're welcome, absolutely. And of course, that was not an answer to this question. I just thought I would read a positive message from a former student. So thank you for sharing, Parminder. Um, all right. Uh, Peya Basak says, um, a range of places from supermarkets to local markets, as well as online shops, are venues which sell replicas and where they can be found. Like a few days ago, I bought a replica branded dress from a nearby market. Okay, Paya, that's good, all right? Uh, Paya, paraphrase, paraphrase. Don't repeat the word markets. Don't repeat uh, the word places. So try to uh, paraphrase with other words like venues, shops, stores. Uh, Charlie says, there are many places people can buy counterfeit items like uh, Flipkart, eBay, online retailers, or offline stores. Like in our city, there's a market named Fancy Market where people buy uh, knockoffs. Uh, duplicate items, Charlie, doesn't make sense because duplicate would be a duplicate of the original, which would be another original. So you can't say, well, meh. I'll have to think about that, Charlie, but duplicate's a little bit awkward. It's unclear, okay? Samaraxon Saidalimova says, I frequently ascertain that uh, online retailers and unofficial commerce departments are most observable places where individuals purchase fraudulent merchandise. Nice vocabulary, Samaraxon. A um, couple of words are repetitive and unnecessary, so careful with that. I correct it in real time. Um, Samaraxon, uh, like what? Give a couple examples. eBay, Amazon, Alibaba. What are you thinking, right? Uh, give me a little bit more. Give me clarity, okay? Always clarity, students. Don't just globally answer questions, all right? That's really important. I even wrote that down earlier in today's class. Don't just give a global general answer because then people are like, mm, like what? Like what are you thinking, okay? So include some more details. Uh, Roshni says, without a doubt, typical markets of counterfeit items uh, are best place to purchase 
duplicate merchandise, like as in my area, just in front of the Empress Mall, there's a big bazaar uh, where I remember I bought some knockoff jeans just last week. Okay. All right. Uh, Color Deep, um, because you're using a weird font uh, in bold, Google is automatically hiding your comments. So please change the font, Color Deep, uh, to the font that everybody else is using, and then um, we can see it. Okay. Uh, students, please remember in the chat if you use a strange writing or fonts, uh, the chat will actually, the AI will block it. So I can't see it. Okay. All right. Amira Sadek says, um, the most common places where I see fake products sold are online retailers such as Amazon, where I got my fake Swiss Army knife. Um, and uh, this is what happened with me. Okay, good, Amira. Uh, the wording in the word order, Amira, it's a little bit awkward, so I changed it to be more natural. Uh, pay attention to that. Um, Uni says, as I mentioned before, I had bought a replica Swiss Army knife for, uh, online. Uh, so I believe most counterfeit products are sold through on online retailers such as Amazon and Alibaba. Okay. All right. Good. Students, great. Uh, think about the follow-up question, and I'm going to give us an answer for this one as well. So I think people can come across uh, fraudulent merchandise both online and offline uh, at secondary retailers like eBay or my local bazaar. As I had just said, the knife I got was from Amazon. All right. You don't have to give super long answers for all questions. Okay. In fact, I don't recommend talking continuously until the examiner stops you. That's bad technique. Okay. I know some people got this advice and heard that, oh, I should just keep talking until the examiner asks me the next question. Uh, please don't do that. Uh, your ideas should have a start and a stop and it should start with an answer and end with uh, the explanation or the example. And sometimes that's uh, two, three sentences that are a little bit longer. Sometimes it's just one nice complex sentence. Sometimes it's two shorter sentences, like in this case. Uh, repeat after me. Where are places that people often buy counterfeit products? I think people can come across fraudulent merchandise both online and offline at secondary retailers like eBay or my local bazaar. As I had just said, the knife I got was from Amazon. Okay, again, I'm using both and, a nice correlative conjunction to emphasize online and offline stores in this case, or physical stores. And uh, like a couple of you used, fraudulent merchandise, that's a nice paraphrase for uh, replica uh, goods or uh, fake items, fake objects, okay? And uh, then the examiner might follow up with, how can people avoid being tricked into buying fake products? Okay, I'm really curious uh, it, about what you will say for this answer. So again, remember students, don't just write and read these, say these, okay? So um, what can people do or how can people avoid being tricked into buying fake products? Okay. Ah, there you are, Elena. Elena says, people should check the product details before buying. They should scan the QR code of the product. 
Also, they can go to the product website and check with the serial number for authenticity. Good advice, Elena. Yeah, uh, serial numbers are absolutely the key in most cases to making sure that the merchandise is authentic. Uh, Violet, that's an okay answer, but it's not clear, okay? Uh, Flower Sun says, everyone should buy products from the official store, uh, shop, or online website that they trust most. Therefore, fake items cannot be bought anymore. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if anybody remembers the expression that was used in yesterday's part two class. Uh, Puza Grung says, the best way to avoid such incidents is to be aware of these products. Moreover, people should read the review comments before buying some goods, Puza, not after buying the goods, before. If you read them after you click the purchase button, it's a little too late. Uh, Suleika says, we can do our homework about the product by doing a market study, taking suggestions from our friends and relatives, and even checking the comments online. Very nice. Yeah, online reviews and comments can be a good source of information, certainly. Okay, Mudlock says, uh, the details to verify authenticity are the name of the company, the geographical address, and the email address used, uh, such as phone number and fax, if available. Okay, good. All right, some nice answers. I like the variety. That's great. Violetta Castro Parade says, I think the best way to avoid being tricked is buying from a certified retailer. For example, if I want to buy an original polo shirt, the best place to check is the official Ralph Lauren website. Violetta, Ralph Lauren makes polo gear, yeah? And um, the first sentence, Violetta, has to be passive. The best way to avoid being tricked, being tricked, okay? Being tricked, okay? So, here we go. There are certainly a few steps that customers can take uh, to avoid being scammed out of their hard-earned money. Firstly, as I had said before, when a deal seems too good to be true, consumers should be extra careful. Also, there are some key identifiers which can authenticate products these days, such as a QR code or serial number. To be on the safe side, it's best to buy products from the original manufacturer whenever possible. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. Again, you don't wanna keep going and going and going, all right? Uh, stay on topic here. Uh, just uh, move with me, repeat after me. So how can people avoid being tricked into buying fake products? There are certainly a few steps that customers can take to avoid being scammed out of their hard-earned money. Firstly, as I had said before, when a deal seems too good to be true, consu consumers should be extra careful. 
Also, there are some key identifiers which can authenticate products these days, such as a QR code or serial number. To be on the safe side, it's best to buy products from the original manufacturer whenever possible. So I took a few elements of your suggestions, put them together and built some language around it. Um, authentic can be a noun, an adjective, or it can be a verb. You can authenticate as well. So I thought I'd show you that uh, different word form for authentic. Notice the different word form for identify. You can say identifiers, okay, used as a plural noun. That's kind of interesting as well. And this is just a reminder of the expression from yesterday's part two, seems too good to be true. Remember that expression. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, and let's roll these next two into one. So how has technology helped customers know product authenticity and does this always help? Okay, so in part three, this is what makes it seem more like a conversation is you can have follow-up by follow-up by follow-up. So the examiner here can say, how has technology helped customers know product authenticity? Does this always help? Okay, so answer those questions for me. Okay. Uh, Pooja Nandagopal says, technology has played a major role in uh, maintaining authenticity from manufacturer to customer. Like these days, we have QR codes or sometimes even a special kind of packaging with a seal to prevent forgery forgery puja it's tampering is okay or forgery puja uh okay puja gurung says yes technology nowadays has played a great role in knowing that the product is genuine like with the help of the internet we can know the product attributes history and price yeah if any of you are following developments in blockchain technology to track items that can be helpful all right Pachu Yadav says, technology has helped customers know the authenticity of products a lot. Now people can browse the original website of the product, see reviews on social media, and ask online other customers about their opinions. Very nice, Pachu. Very nice. Okay, just a couple of corrections there. Gurpinder Kaur says, Technology has a major impact on consumers' minds in order to know the authenticity of products like providing customers re customer reviews and quality check to customers. Yeah, okay, that's good. All right, nice answer, students. Make sure you're saying these nice and loud. So repeat after me. Practice your fluency, your pronunciation, okay? All right. Rafael Andres Guerva, Guevara says, technology has changed the way that we can verify authenticity of whatever merchandise we buy since we can go directly uh, to the manufacturer online and get a brief review of the product and even special features to look for to make sure that it is the original. Very good, Raphael. Raphael, I made some corrections there, took out some words, put in some words. Uh, go back, review that at 44 minutes in the video just to see how my uh, reading was a bit different than what you wrote. Uh, and uh, of course, practice to avoid such mistakes. Okay. Rajveer Singh, our member, says, technology has helped immensely to save customers from buying counterfeit products. People can use official websites to check serial numbers as well as QR codes, which I was just mentioning before. Uh, so to know the authenticity prior to buying the item. Okay, Rajveer, good. Uh, Rajveer, I just put in an extra sentence there uh, because we just talked about QR code and um, the serial number. So we might as well connect those, right? 
Odina Asatulayeva says the presence uh, and the advent in technology, consumers are often announced the original product. Take the example, one may know the official website and contact them as well. Okay, Adina, not bad. Adina, uh, make sure to reflect the grammar of the questions to get those higher band scores. So this is present perfect, has helped, has helped, has the present perfect auxiliary verb, and helped is the past participle. When you hear that, you should reflect it in your answer. You will get a better band score. Okay, so uh, technology. Let me give you a nice answer here. I think modern day tech has greatly aided responsible shoppers in verifying the authenticity of goods they purchase through scanning QR codes that I had just mentioned with their mobile phone camera and cameras, as well as reading customer reviews prior to making their purchase. Unfortunately, This is what I neglected to do when I bought my knife but never again. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um so here we go. Repeat after me. I think modern day tech has greatly aided responsible shoppers in verifying the authenticity of goods they purchase through scanning QR codes that I just mentioned with their mobile phone cameras, as well as reading customer reviews prior to making their purchase. Unfortunately, this is what I neglected to do when I bought my knife, but never again. All right. Let's do a couple more questions. So now if you're moving along nicely, the examiner will say, okay, uh, let's talk about copyright protection. Hmm, interesting. Same kind of idea, but definitely a different perspective. So copyright protection. Uh, here we go, students. It is common for people and companies to copy and use others' creations like literature and video to their own benefit. Why do they do this? Give me a nice answer for this one. So it's common for people and companies to copy and use others' creations like literature and video to their own benefit. Why? do they do this? So why do companies and people copy the works of others? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Let's see, has anybody gone this far in the speaking questions for today? And here, hint, hint, you can use quite a few of the expressions that we uh, used in the previous part three of this speaking section. Maybe something to do with that coat tail, potentially. Nick Haim says, yes, this phenomenon is popular all over the market and many companies uh, 
You can easily purchase and get pro fraudulent products by attracting beautiful advertising like my grandmother. Okay, Nick Haim, this isn't so much physical products. So copyright is with non-physical products like books and ideas. Okay. Rafael Andres says... Copyright protection is infringement. It's the stealing of others' creations. And this can give people an advantage uh, to not do the hard work uh, knowing the people and the brand. Okay, Raphael, I kind of get the idea, but you have to express it in a clear way. Okay. Paya says, in my opinion, companies copy others' work to avoid the millions of dollars for advertising and to make a huge profit in the short run. Pay a very good, yeah, short run, not short time, short run, okay? Flower Sun says, it's extremely common when someone mirrors others' creations as if they created it themselves. Um, in uh, the positive side of literature, because when we read it, we copy the idea, we make it. Okay, I'm not sure about the second half of that flower sun, but the start was good. All right. Elena says, they do this to gain profit and a good name in a very short period of time. To make a fake product related to half of the product cost, which makes the product cheap, as well as less durable. All right, Elena. Pooja says, to get better attraction and popularity. Mm, all right, Pooja, I think there's a bit of re repetition there. Uh, Renu says, nowadays companies often use others' creations like literature and video for their own selfish motives. They just want to gain the name and fame, therefore doing this they know that they will become popular. All right, Renu, good. So people and businesses will often copy the intellectual property of others in order to gain fame and profit easily. As I had said prior, it is another form of riding the coattail, coattails of others without having to do the legwork. All right, students. So here we go, repeat after me. It is common for people and companies to copy and use others' creations, like literature and video, to their own benefit. Why do they do this? People and businesses will op often copy the intellectual property of others in order to gain fame and profit easily. As I had said prior, it is another form of riding the coattail of others without having to do the legwork. Okay? Legwork means putting in the effort. So again, just uh, practicing that expression from before, that idiom, writing the coattail of others. Um, students, I'm going to stop there. I think you've done a fantastic job. There are more questions here. You can take a look at these, answer these on your own time, record them on your phone. You can send me an MP3 recording. I will gladly give you a rough band score estimate of what you would get on the IELTS speaking based on your answers to these questions, okay? And uh, of course, uh, remember students that you can practice speaking on our websites. You can find other students. There's interactive video audio chat on the websites. They're integrated between the general and the academic. Um, so, uh, Make sure to check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS, okay? 
If you have any questions, you can always send me an email. Of course, I'll happily answer those. That's it for me for now. I will be back Wednesday at this time with speaking part one for another week of life, live IELTS classes. I wish you all a safe, healthy, happy uh, rest of your weekend and start to your next week and send you much love from the heart of Budapest. Bye for now.